What's going on guys? Yarn with Hardy Tech. Welcome back to Pokemon Leaf Green Neat Egg Lock Run. In the last episode, we made our way to Cerulean City. We had some new Pokemon, including like 50 million illegal Pokemon. And of course, we've got Coronas the Bagon and Beto the Lapras, as well as our uh, now dead Doorbell. And before we go on, I need to correct the mistake I made. So, the one time this entire LP that I looked at the fifth generation list for TMs, and it happened to be the one time where it's different than the third gen list. Um, Aron, turns out, was actually legal. I, when I went to Aron, I just instinctively looked at the fifth page list because I'm like, well, if he can learn Water Pulse, I'm sure he'll still be able to learn it in fifth generation. I didn't see it on the list. I don't even actually know if Water Pulse is still a TM in fifth gen or if it got changed. I don't remember. But, yeah, it turns out in third gen he can learn Water Pulse. So to make up for this... The next Pokemon I catch, we're just not going to hatch an egg for. We're going to say Aron was just that Pokemon instead. So, uh, actually, I better go put Aron out of the illegal box and into my backup box. So, yeah, we are allowed to use Aron. He is not illegal, and I just, I made a boo-boo. So, my apologies, Aron. He did not deserve that. Anyways, today we're going to be going and taking on Nugget Bridge and preparing for Misty, who I am extremely nervous of because at this point I still don't have anybody that's strong against her although um, yeah no I thought for a second there Lapras had the Thunderbolt but no Lapras does not have Thunderbolt so I think I'm gonna train up Coronis here because he will resist water and Dragon Claw should hit things pretty freaking hard so um, that sounds like a decent idea, and Cronus should be able to take on this book trainer, because he does have wonderful, wonderful Ember. Oh, no, not a Kelpie. Oh, oh uh, I should actually check this. I remember reading a comment, someone saying that um, if Coronis is Rockhead, then Double Edge is going to be extremely overpowered, because he will not take any recoil damage. And I think Double Edge is either... A, I think uh, Double Edge is 120 base power, because I believe Takedown is 90, so... Yeah, I don't know what his ability is, but right now I'm really hoping it's Rockhead because that would be um, really freaking amazing. I don't know actually which of Bagon's stats is higher, if it's his physical attack or special attack. I believe most Salamences run special sets, so I'm going to assume that um, they're more special attackers, but I'm not sure, you know. I, I think a lot of the times that um, Shellguns use Dragon Claw. But maybe that's just because they don't learn any good special dragon moves. Although, again, this is standard generation where all dragon type moves will be special. So, overall, I'm probably overthinking that too much. I When I think of Wi-Fi battling, I always think of 5th generation where they have the um, physical special split. So, when I try to like think of move, like sets that Pokemon use, like Salamance running Draco Meteor, I'll be like, oh, well, that's automatically special. But I don't. I gotta realize that Dragon Claw is always special in 3rd generation. So let's take a quick look at Coronas. He has Rockhead. Oh, yay. And he has a better physical, way better physical attack than he has special attack. And I guess the cool, I guess, I don't know if this is good or bad thing about the hardy nature is that it is a neutral nature. So it doesn't boost either stat, but it also doesn't decrease either stat. So I guess that's a good thing. Let's see how much this beautiful double edge is going to, oh, wow. I actually, I actually thought that would kill. Okay learn something every day. When it was going down, I'm like, oh, Coronas is just going to wreck things. And then a Pidgey lived a double edge, which made me a little bit sad. So I actually have a lot of, wow. I am actually really freaked out this thing's going to try to poison powder me. Um, I have a lot of training to do because I'm pretty sure Misty's Starmie is either 21 or 22. And yeah, so, and the, the bad thing is we don't have the Versus Seeker yet. You don't get the Versus Seeker until you get to Vermillion, and I'm super excited to get the Versus Seeker because that makes training about 5 million percent easier. Uh, let's give Charcoal a little bit of experience here. I know I just don't want to focus on one Pokemon this entire time because then he'll start to get over leveled, and that's a very bad thing. Like, Totodile is over leveled. Well, I don't actually know if Totodile would be considered over leveled at this point because I think he's... we're kind of under leveled overall, so... Yeah, that's like the one one of the bad things about Nuzlocke is that you kind of invest a lot of time into one certain Pokemon, or like a few Pokemon, and not really a lot into the other Pokemon. And then those few Pokemon died and die, and you're screwed because you're left with a bunch of underleveled Pokemon. So you really have to be wow. Okay, Double Edge isn't doing nearly as much as I'm expecting it to do. 
Let's try Dragon Claw. I know our special attack is lower, but it... Wow. <laughs> what? What? Okay, that's... I'm not even going to question that. Um, I, I, I would have put Baco in the box and brought in Aron, which is... Wait, is Aron a pseudo-legendary? Or I can't remember if Agron is pseudo legendary or not, because I know Salamence and T and um, Metagross are. I don't remember if um, our Agron is. I don't think he is. I think Metagross is like the only non-Dragon Suedo in the entire meta game. So Agron should be a Suedo, a pseudo. Apparently, I think I'm saying it wrong. I kept saying Suedo, and someone's like getting mad at me in the comments. I believe it is actually pronounced pseudo, like S O O D. Uh, however you spell do do <laughs> d-o-u-g-h yeah that sounds good i believe that's the proper way of saying it and i'm just not smart so not the end of the world but um yeah agron should really be a pseudo yeah okay i said it wrong that time agron should be a pseudo legendary because he just i don't know he seems like right up there with metagross and salamis although to be fair salamis and metagross are probably more powerful pokemon than agron Still, Agron, he's just like this, he's like, he has like the same kind of pattern as all the other pseudo-legendaries, where he starts out really pathetic, his second stage is, is somewhat useful, but not very fantastic. I think Metang is probably like the best um, second stage pseudo-legendary, because Metang is actually really useful in Wi-Fi battles and NU, and I'm freaking poisoned again, of course. I hate Nidoran. I freaking hate poison types so much. This is what you're gonna get, Nidoran. You could have been a Nido King right now, but no. You just how is Nidoran faster than its fully evolved form, who's a level higher than it? There's no way Nidoran has a faster speed stat than Nido King. Just no. That's I'm not even gonna like even pretend to believe that's possible because I think like very very few Pokemon get slower when they evolve. I think one of them is like Yamas becomes slower when he evolves into um, Copagrigus. I think that's one of them, which uh, kind of makes sense because I mean he becomes this giant freaking casket. He's gonna be a lot slower than a little ghost. So, but yeah, there's no way. I don't know how that Nidoran outsped me. I don't want to know. But let's get the stupid burn off of Coronis. And we have two more battles to go. And someone, I actually remember someone making a comment. I don't remember what video it was on. I don't think it was Leaf Green. It was just some random video I saw probably. Where they mentioned how if you lose to the Nugget guy. And uh, you can like get infinite Nuggets from him. Because he'll just... Whoa! I did not even realize he was 18. Oh my god. I never even looked at his level. I got so distracted. Oh. Oh. Okay. I actually really deserve that. That was so stupid on my part. This whole time they've been like level 15, 16, like was the highest. I. Ah. Oh, I am so stupid. Um. Wow. <laughs> oh. <sighs> well, that didn't go how I thought it would. Where's my death box? I don't remember. Here it is. Bad Coronis. Like, the freaking best nickname ever. Such a good Pokemon. Wow. Man, two amazing po Okay, level 14 is looking very dangerous right now. Uh, so, I might want to look out for the rest of my Pokemon. <laughs> I guess... Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I could. I'm not gonna technically use Aron yet because I haven't got a Pokemon to like redeem for him. So I think I'll just stick with five for now because I don't want to use either Poliwag or Dunsparce. They just, eh. You know, Dunsparce. I, as much as I, you know, last time I said something like this, and I ended up getting Ron, like the greatest Pokemon ever. So I, what am I supposed? Who am I supposed to train? I guess. I guess. I don't know. I guess I'll do switch training. I don't know what to do. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, you could actually get infinite, infinite nuggets from this guy if you just like automatically, or if you can like throw the battle so you lose it, you'll get a nugget every time you take him on, and you can pretty much get infinite money doing that, which is actually pretty freaking cool. So 
I do know that he's he's level 15. I'm gonna see what I can do. That's a crit. As long as I don't get poisoned, I'm feeling fairly confident about this battle because I believe another ember will not kill it. Fantastic. And all those keep living and ignore me because it's evil like that. Okay, let's try this again. What are we trying again? I don't know. It's Zubat. I believe Beto has Ice Beam. I believe. I'm probably wrong. I don't really know why I'm bothering training up Beto. I mean, you know, did I really just freaking flinch? Frick, Astonish is such an annoying move. I don't, when I was younger, I thought Astonish had a 100% um, flinch ratio because every time a Zubat used it on me, I flinched. I just, it annoyed me so much. Okay, our, okay, let's go catch a Pokemon. This Pokemon, if assuming we catch it, will will um, become our on. Oh, it's another Caterpie. I didn't know you can get Caterpies on this route. Huh. Okay, let's smog it. That should not kill it because I don't think smog is like capable of killing anything. Fantastic Caterpie. Let's just throw the Pokeball now. Uh, I better go back and kill and catch some Pokeballs before I go to the next route. One, two. Three and caught it. Okay, so we can now legally use Aron, the legal Pokemon. I'm gonna nickname you Box because you go into the box. I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't want it to happen this way, but so I guess I, I don't know. I want to start training up um Aron because he will be useful against the Ten Surge because I'm pretty sure he'll learn some Ground type moves by level up. I'm a little scared having him with me when I'm training for Misty, but I gotta think ahead. Also, I can't just focus on Misty right now. I have to think about future battles. And having Pokemon that'll be useful. So, um, we'll just throw Caterpie in here and definitely heal up because I'm pretty sure Houndor is not looking too good right now. So, while we're doing some training, uh, if you guys remember the last video, I was telling you guys how I like wrote things, some things down that I, in case I couldn't think of anything to talk about, I would have these to talk about. And, uh, it's not that I can't think of anything to talk about right now. It's like this has just kind of been on my mind for a while, so I thought I would. Just bring it up and get your guys' opinion on it. So, uh, that is what we're going to do. Let's just stack up on a bunch of potions in the meantime. So, let's have a bit of a group discussion, okay? And, for the record, um, I... Oh, actually, before I get to that, this actually reminds me about, like, group discussions in the comments. I do think it's funny when people, like, rename their channel to one of my Pokemon. Like, uh, someone did Moon and Nidoran. Although they found out they can't change it to Nidoking, King, so they're still Nidoran. <laughs> and, you know, the Dunsparce and everything... But please stop freaking spamming the comments, guys. I know it wasn't nearly as bad as it was on episode 3, but it's still annoying when you guys, like, just kind of spam it like that. So, I appreciate, and I do think it's funny when you guys, like, change your name to kind of support my Pokemon like that. But you are a fighting type. Let's be smart. But please stop, like, spamming comments. You know, it's okay to have conversations, but literally putting, like, 5 million comments does get annoying. And I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying please try to control yourselves, okay? So, back to what I was saying about our little group discussion here. Um, dude, dude, okay, I'm never going to get this discussion started because I'm just going to keep getting interrupted. <laughs> um, the internet. The internet, we, as we all know, because we all live on it, is a very fantastically wonderful place where you can meet the best friends in the world because the internet, I truly believe, has like the best people. Uh, despite having a reputation for being filled with like douchebags and assholes, the internet really does have like the nicest people you'll ever meet. And... Um, it kind of got me thinking that, oh my god, it's just another Caterpie! <laughs> what? Oh my god, there's so many of them. Um, okay, so you guys remember meeting Rusty. You guys should know who she is by now. Um, Rusty has a girlfriend, because Rusty is in fact a lesbian, That's although that shouldn't be important to this. Just pointing out, Rusty has a, a significant other that lives about 400 miles away from us, so it does make it rather difficult on them, and... They plan on actually seeing each other within like the next few weeks. Rusty's gonna be going down there to visit her for an anime convention. And Rusty's mom, despite Rusty being 19, is just like super uber against the idea. And I can understand to a certain extent. Uh, what am I? What am I doing? <laughs> Due to yeah, okay, whatever. I can understand to a certain extent why a parent would be nervous about someone meeting someone else from the internet. Um, I mean, my grandmother tried to do like everything she could to stop me from meeting Chapel Lamb, but the thing is that Rusty and her significant other have met each other before. You know, they've been in person before. They obviously they have like never met before. So 
Where did my Caterpie go? There you are. Okay, I'll get back to that story, because I do have, like, there's actually, like, a discussion kind of topic here. Right now, I'm just telling a little story. Let's take box two. Let's go this one. All right, so we're going to put... We're gonna put Bako in a box, and I know Bako. Someone actually changed their account name to Bako to G Bako to Jatini. They're gonna be really sad now. Anyways, I'm never gonna be able to finish this story. Okay, let's hatch this egg really quick. It's oh yeah, hair cross. Oh yeah, okay. I'm super. Actually, I'm playing um Storm Silver on my uh 3DS right now, or my R4 DS thing, and I have a hair cross named Sipper. So. I'm going to nickname this one Sipper in honor of my hair cross. And you better be legal or I'm going to be so upset right now. Okay, he just, uh, he, this guy's got a spot on the team. I don't care. He, adamant nature, beautiful. Tackle, weird, seismic, seismic toss. Um, really quick, well, yeah, I'm going to check to make sure tackle and Lear are the legit moveset. So one sec. Okay, good news. This hair cost is completely legal, and it is going to be level 8, so I got to rare candy it up really quickly. Where are my rare candies? Okay, so as I was saying, you know, um, Rusty's mom is just, like, completely against the idea of them going to visit each other, which I really don't understand. It's been really frustrating for her, too, lately, so that's, you know, really sucks. And, um, it just, it kind of got me thinking, like, what? I know obviously it's okay to meet people on the internet. You should be cautious, and I can un fully understand like, why parents get paranoid about this kind of thing, because there's like a good chance that the person you could be meeting with is a pedophile, but, you know, I mean, it, exchanging pictures can be like a little fishy and everything, but, I mean, like, you know, if you video chat, you talk on the phone, you do all this stuff, it should be pretty obvious that this is like a real person, so, you know, but... Uh, it kind of like made... This leads me to yet another story. These are all kind of inter intertwined it has to do with like meeting people on the internet so don't think I'm just like ranting about whatever I want here um oh I gotta get Aron up to the level of that other Caterpie so he the other Caterpie was level 7 I am the worst storyteller ever I'm just I'm never gonna get these words out um <laughs> I am super in love with this hair cross right now I will tell this story by the end of this video I promise don't worry uh let's go to Toto so basically the other day, I was looking through the comments on my videos, and I ended up seeing this one channel. Um, I, I was just like reading random comments. I saw someone's channel picture was like this really cute girl, and I was like, ooh, wow, she's really pretty. I want to go say hi to her. <laughs> and I ended up going to her channel, and I like just to, like make sure she's like a real person and not uh, just one of those like desperate, lonely guys who use pictures of girls as their profile pictures because they have nothing better to do. And she was like a real person. And it's just like, well, I, I have, like, no clue what to do right now. Because I feel like part of me is like, hey, Hardy, you should totally go introduce yourself to her. Because, obviously, she likes Pokemon and she subscribed to you. So, you know, something about you must be interesting. But the other part of me is like, that would be really, really weird, wouldn't it? Because, you know, a, a subscriber introducing um, itself, I'm going to say itself because you know, it could be a guy or a girl, to a Let's Player, you know, adding him to Skype or tweeting him or whatever, that's like... A very common occurrence that happens all the time in the YouTube world because but a let's player just like randomly picking one of their subscribers and being like hey you want to be my friend I saw your profile picture I want to make out with you that's really disturbing and it's that's like the best way I can think of it is like that's really freaking weird so obviously I've like never talked to her I've like just kind of moved on with life um, I like didn't message her or do anything about it but it just kind of got me thinking like is it would that be weird, or am I just like over exaggerating here for like some random what you let's player to message one of his subscribers just completely out of the blue hitting on them? I'm not saying I was going to hit on her, but um, I just I guess it's more of in general just like a let's player just randomly messaging one of his subscribers or her subscribers. Uh, yeah, dang it, I wish I could use one of my stab moves or what ice beam isn't even stab and. I, I guess this is all like intertwined I promise this much do you think the internet relationships can work because you know Rusty being in pretty much like a long distance internet relationship and it's worked out for her so far I mean they've been going out since December so it obviously can work but do you think that something like that actually like can work uh, you know I met Chapel Lamb who was my first girlfriend through the internet and through YouTube actually you know she liked my videos and where am I going why am I going to the why am I going to the PC? I don't know. Um, 
you know, I met Chapel Wham through YouTube. You know, she ended up messaging me one day saying she liked my videos and that she also happened to live in Northern California. And so we ended up like talking and that's how we became friends. And uh, I wouldn't really say that. I don't know if I would say that like the relationship I had with Chapel Wham was an internet relationship because like 90% of the time we never actually really communicated over the internet. Most of the time we just talked on the phone, but. Yeah, I guess overall the general question is, do you think these long distance kind of relationships where you barely ever like see the person, can those work? Do you think they like have a like good decent chance of actually being, uh, well working? You know, I think in one case I think that um, it's actually better to have a relationship like this because it makes those moments when you are really actually together a lot more special. Uh, you know, it's just not like oh hey you want to come over and hang out like you do every other freaking day. Uh, it's like, oh my god, I'm actually gonna get to see you. I'm so freaking excited. And that's really amazing, like, that feeling, you know? When I first went to go visit, when I went to go visit Chapland for, like, the very first time, I was really, really, really freaking excited. I mean, it felt like a big, giant, amazing deal because I, like, never get to see her, so. Uh, but on the other hand, I think that those kind of relationships can really have a lot of problems. Uh, one being, you know, the distance and not getting to see each other a lot, and... Uh, you know, not being able to see each other a lot and not wanting to be like um, over, I guess not overprotective, like overly attached and like always wanting to know where they are and what they're doing. And that could like lead to some trust issues. Like you don't know for sure what they're doing. You just have to try and trust that they're not like out with someone else. Um, so, you know, these kind of relationships have their ups and downs, but... I guess, yeah, like I'm asking, do you guys think that, like, these kind of relationships have a legitimate chance of working? And would you, like, ever actually, like, be interested in being in an inter internet relationship like that? By the way, ladies, I'm single. Yeah. <laughs> so if you live in the Northern California area, definitely hit me up. And I need to stop promoting myself because that's really weird. I'm sorry. I, You don't have to live in California. You could be from anywhere, really. Norway, Canada, Mexico, Australia, Italy other countries I can't think of at the time I don't judge you can live wherever you want so yeah um I think I I don't know I don't know if I really that story didn't let's get the words out to the Hardy. that story didn't really go the way I was expecting it to do of course none of my stories ever do wow I wish I had like brick break right now can't wait to get to the SSN when my Heracross will be able to learn brick break by TM although I think um I think he gets brick break by level up but that might just be in gen 4 I don't know actually guess we'll have to find out so I think that'll be like a good little discussion for us all to come together and talk about and yeah so this video is coming close and we'll probably end it once we reach Bill um, so I have one last request from you guys now so in my last grinding video I ended up doing uh, telling you guys about the time I became a porn dealer and it seemed to be generally well received now, I do really believe that these kind of videos are better than the grinding montages because they're a lot more entertaining and they like, actually have a purpose instead of just a minute or two minutes with music so uh, I ended up getting a comment from somebody saying that I should have my subscribers like send in stories and then I'll share them with you guys and I like I really like that idea and that comment got a bunch of thumbs up so I'm assuming you guys like it too so I'm inviting you guys and I will like um, to don't worry, by the way, this will be 1000% anonymous unless you specify otherwise. What I'm inviting you guys to do is, because after this video we are going to be doing some grinding before the next one we take on Misty, is share a story with me, okay? What you, I don't want you to leave it in comments or email it to me, just send it to my YouTube inbox, uh, you send it as a PM, and if you just have like some funny or awkward or weird story that you think might be entertaining or I might at least be able to try and make entertaining, then definitely feel free to share it with me, and um, I might do like two or three. This, I kind of want this to be similar to, um, I don't know if you guys know who this is, but Nobody Epic, who makes Call of Duty videos, he does a series called Awkward Situations, where he has people submit situations, like really awkward situations to him, and he'll tell the story, and then he'll like relate to it, tell his own story that like relates to that. I think that'd be something that's like really cool to do for these, so let's, yeah, I want to, come on, I don't want to be stupid here, but Okay, sweet scent. Um, I'm inviting you guys to send in some of your weird stories. I probably, I don't know how long, how many I should do. I should, I should do like two or three or just keep it to like one, like nice, sweet, and short. I don't know, but hopefully someone will actually step up and send in a nice, interesting, or awkward, or weird story, or just funny in general. 
so you can entertain everybody else. And that's something I really hope to see some people be like, hey, I'm going to try to entertain Hardy's audience. And yeah, like I said, they're completely anonymous. Anonymous. The only person who will ever know you sent it is me. Unless you specify otherwise and like want people to know it's you for some weird reason. So, yeah. That is my request for you guys today is to send me your videos and let's get freaky in here, okay? Let's do our stuff. Let's take our pants down and do all that funky stuff. So, hopefully this will actually be the last grinding montage before... Er, Okay, that's not, we're going to have a lot of grinding montages. This, this will be like the last really tedious grinding montage for me because I should have the verses recorded by the next time we have to do grinding. So that'll put a big happy face on my face. Uh, <gasps> Tony's evolving! Yeah! And... Is he going to... Okay, yep. So the National Pokedex did work. A lot of people were like, Hardy, Totodile's not going to evolve. But I told you in episode 2 I got the National Pokedex. So you guys had to stop being paranoid and pay attention for once, so... Totodile is now a crocodile. That is awesome. And we're going to go talk to... We are going to save that for next time. So we're going to start off the episode talking... Dang it. Actually, no, yeah. Okay, that'll be fine. Um, remember, guys, send in you some of your awkward situations that you think I might be able to talk about in a video. Make them interesting or funny or weird or boring or sexual. Whatever you want. And let's have that comment... Let's have that discussion down below about the whole internet relationship thing. So until next time, I'm Marty Tagoyo. Peace!